is really understanding what value we add to the customer. If you're having those conversations across mm -hmm. um, the whole sales organization consistently, you are going to start achieving a high performing. Hello, I'm delighted again to have Maria Nordstrom with me. Welcome Thank back, you. Maria. Thank you, John. I it's love a your pleasure smile. to be here. <laughs> <laughs> We've had lots of discussions about how to change a high performance culture. Yes, we have. But it's tough. It it's is tough. really tough. You know, one thing is to set out on the strategy that you want to create this and what it looks like for your organisation. Um, but two is to be consistent, not only your own leadership, but all leadership within the organisation and being consistent and congruent with that. And yeah. that's the big challenge. So understanding this and understanding people fall back to old habits and so on. What are some of the recommendations you've got for, for sales leaders and leadership groups to actually consistently drive that cultural change? Because it's a journey, as we talked about. It's going to take months or years. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. How do we stop reverting? So our key, one key thing is it's in the language. So when you're at the end of the month, end of the quarter, end of the, you know, end of the financial year, it's very easy to revert back to the language that is really push, push, push to, to actually achieve the numbers, which is fine, right? But it, I think it's very key that you work with a language that is constructive and doesn't revert back to, to that kind of push, push, push at all cost language. It doesn't mean that you don't push. It just means that the language still needs to be congruent with what you are trying to achieve. It reminds me of a discussion I had with Dean Kelly mm. um, some, some time ago now in this Talking Sales series. Mm. Uh, and he really talked about you know, the old language of getting towards the end of the month. You know, yeah, wh wh where are your deals? How big are they? When are they going to close? Yeah. Is not the right language for Absolutely. sales leaders to have. And I think if you manage that pipeline and that, and that those expectations consistently across the whole sales period, you will not have those surprises at the end. However, I know from experience that it doesn't matter what you do, you still have part, you know, parents that want more or a parent company that wants more than you can deliver. Uh, and there are times when that is going to happen. And one thing as a sales leader, even if you're a sales director or a sales manager, that is very key that you manage that because you can only achieve what you can achieve, provided the pipeline is healthy, that yeah. you're actually doing all the right things to bring input into the pipeline, uh, your sales calls, driving those sales calls to take you through to the end you know, of getting an order. Now, if you have a gap in the pipeline, there's a different problem, which has nothing to do with the fact that you've got a problem at the end of the yeah. sales period. And, and by roaring in and saying, how are we going to close the deals by the end of the month, aren't, aren't going to solve that problem. They're just Absolutely. going to make it worse, aren't they? Absolutely. Mm. So I think the, lang the consistency of language, the consistency across the whole organisation of language, and they, actually the communication also in writing. So this is how you basically talk to one another or as a group, but also how you communicate in emails, how you communicate when you actually do presentations. If there is a consistency across the organisation in doing that and deliver, that's one of the key points. So you don't uh, lose And it. so what do you do when you, when you see the wrong language being used throughout your organisation? As a leader, you, know, you, know, you obviously have to pull people up on that. Absolutely. And I think it's really key that one, as a, when you have a group of people that work together as a, as a, a group of leaders across the whole organisation, mm -hmm. the people feel that they have or are empowered enough to do that, to remind people, hey, you know, not being confrontational, but hey, mm. hey, you know, I know we're mm. all under pressure, mate, but, you know, we need to really pull ourselves in a bit because mm. this is going to cause more harm than good. So. And, and talking about customer centricity earlier, mm. the, the language of the organisation tends yeah. to be about the customer no matter what we're doing, right? Absolutely. So we can pull people up on that. You know, we, we, this is focused on the customer. Mm. And, and my experience, and, and talking about that discussion with Dean Kelly, he said the sort of questions you're going to ask is, what's the customer trying to achieve? Mm. What are their drivers? Yeah. You know, what, are the, what, what, what process are they going through? How can we help them in that process? Yep. They're the sorts of questions we can be asking the people in the field rather than tell me about the deal, how big is it, when is it going to close? Absolutely. But that comes back to what I said earlier. You can't do that at the end of the month when you've got three days to deliver something. That is something that you need to do consistently. We talked about coaching earlier, and coaching is a language that you do consistently over time yeah. in every conversation. And not that revert is, under pressure. Exactly. Mm. So that's one of the key things. And the other thing is, when and in creating a high-performing culture, 
Uh, there is a bit of a perception that you kind of lose a bit of momentum and, and, and focus on sales. I think if you use the right language, if you work consistently over, you know, the whole sales period, as we talked about, this pipeline management is actually coaching conversations, it's really truly understanding the customer, it's really understanding what value we add to the customer. If you're having those conversations across mm -hmm. um, the whole sales organisation consistently, you are going to start achieving a high performing and sales When people culture. do revert, it'll be quite nice noticeable and people will be in a position to pull them up. Yeah, on. and other thing is if you actually start the planning process, so they actually own the plan, it's not only saying that you mm -hmm. basically have, you know, you have a $2.2 .2 million target and your team has a $10 million target. It's all right. So, but sitting down and actually doing a plan, mm -hmm. really truly understanding the target market, what are the customers that we can basically uh, renew contracts with this year? What are the risks in doing that? What value do we add to them? What are the new customers that we want to target? How do we actually uh, come up with a win strategy with them? What is the current relationship with the current you know, vendor? How do we work with that to overcome it? And then really start looking at the, the people and the key um, training requirements the team may have. Once they've delivered that plan, that's the plan you manage them to, right. not the number. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and that, <coughs> excuse me, that will help change uh, behaviour anyway if you're doing that around the plan versus the numbers. They own the plan, mm -hmm. you use the language, it's a coaching language, and they've actually created that plan which you've agreed to at the end of the day, and that you work with them. That means that you have a level of accountability to something that they've actually owned from day one, and that's the big difference. Spot on, love it. Thanks mm. very much, Maria. Thank you.